Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Deepak Vadhva and in this video we will be continuing with our second lecture of fisheries. In the previous lecture we have started the fisheries and I tried to told you some basic concept related to fishes. So before I start with the next lecture with the second part I would like to revise the previous concept. So in the previous lecture we were studying about the fishes. First of all we have discussed that what is fish and what is shellfish. So if we talk about the fisheries, so in fisheries there are two terms. One is fish, fish which is known as finned fish and finned fishes are also known as real fishes. And second one is shellfish, shellfish means the fishes which have shell on their upper surface like we can say about shrimp or it can be prawn, it can be crab or some other organism. So fisheries will be divided into two parts, one will be shellfish farming and second will be fin fish farming. In case if we are cultivating or if we are rearing finned fishes, what we are doing, we are rearing finned fishes that will be known as pisciculture. Please make sure pisciculture means when we are rearing the finned fishes, we are rearing the real fishes, it is known as pisciculture. And when we are involved in the farming of shellfish, it will be considered as shellfish farming. Now shellfish farming as well as pisciculture, both are the part of fisheries. But in fisheries, one is finned fishes and second one is fishes which have shell on their upper surface like shrimp, crab or maybe prawn. And the third category is mariculture. What is mariculture? It's very simple. Talking about mariculture, mariculture means related to aquatic organism but only marine related. So the aquatic environment which are found in marine environment is the part of mariculture. So there are two terms, one is moriculture. Moriculture means it is not related to fisheries. Moriculture means cultivation of mulberry plants. Do you know about mulberry plants? Of course, yes. When we talk about the mulberry plant, so in case of sericulture, it is compulsory if we are rearing silk worm. Which silk worm? It is mulberry silk worm. So mulberry silk worm, why we call it mulberry silk worm? Because it eats leaves of mulberry plants. So cultivation of mulberry is known as moriculture. Cultivation of marine aquatic organism is known as mariculture cultivation of real fishes, cultivation of fishes which have fins is known as pisciculture and cultivation of fishes which does not have fins, which does not, which are not actual uh, fishes, not like real fishes, but they have shell on their upper surface, they are known as shellfish farming. So I hope now you are clear about mariculture, about pisciculture and about shellfish farming. Next, we have studied in the previous session. If you have not gone through the previous session, so before continuing with this video, please go and watch the first session. So in the previous session, we have discussed about the life stages of fishes. So in case of life stages, once they complete the incubation period of the egg, so after the incubation period is complete, now the second stage is hatchling. So when the fishes will hatch from the eggs, they will be considered a hatchling. After hatchling, the next stage was spawn stage. It will take two to three days for a hatchling to become a spawn. After spawn, it will take seven to 10 days to become a fry. And now the fry will take 30 to 60 days and it will go, grow up to the next stage, which is known as fingerling. And now this fingerling will take next seven to 10 months and it will be having an age of one year. And now this fish will be known as, yes, that is earling. So now life stage of fishes means first of all egg, second is hatchling, third is spawn, fourth is fry, fifth is fingerling and sixth one is earling. That's right. Perfect. After the life cycle of st life stages of fishes, we have discussed about the aquaculture and polyculture. Aquaculture means that a large, that a huge branch of aquatic organism where we are rearing so many aquatic organisms. So any kind of aquatic organism which is getting reared in the artificial means or maybe we are capturing the fishes from the ocean also. Everything, whatever is getting done in the water is known as aquaculture but hydroponics is not the part of aquaculture sir why because in case of hydroponics we are growing plants that are usually that are usually grown over the soil 
so that is not the part of aquaculture otherwise if we say about aquaculture so whatever the organism whatever the plants are there they are the part of aquaculture which is related to water next one we have discussed about the polyculture so what is the meaning of polyculture polyculture means when we talk about the fishes so if you are rearing more than one fish species more than one spe fish species so that you can use the complete nikkei of the pond like there are two kind of fishes one is phytoplankton second is zooplankton so now what you are doing you are trying to use the complete food available within the pond so rearing of more than one species is known as polyculture next we have studied about the fish hatchery what is the meaning of fish hatchery in case of fish hatchery where we are rearing the fishes at the initial stage is known as fish hatchery this is also the part of pre stocking because once the fish will be mature till fingerling size so after fingerling size that is considered best for the table fish production so now from the hatchery we will move to the table fish production pond so that will be considered as post stocking so part of hatchery is Free stocking and the second part where we are stocking the fishes so that they can gain weight and after the weight gain we can sell them into the market that is known as post stocking so hatchery is free stocking and after the hatchery second stage second pond will be known as post stocking so there are two kind of pond in the fishes one is pre and second is post stocking and in the last we have studied about the two terms one was carrying capacity so a area that can be a lake a river or pond an area which can support the life of organism so the number of organism which can rear properly in an aquatic environment it is known as carrying capacity of that particular environment and in the last we have studied about the biomass biomass means the weight of all aquatic organism available within an area is known as biomass okay so this was about the previous video now let's come to the next part and let's start with the today's session okay let's move to the next part and next we will be discussing about the fishes fishes based on the migration and breeding see there are a lot of fishes there are a lot of species of the fishes and when we talk about these various species they have different different habit there are some species who used to stay in the fresh water and move in the saline water for the breeding purpose and there are fishes who used to stay in the saline water but used to move in the fresh water while breeding now first of all the doubt arises in our mind what is fresh water and what is marine or saline water so see there are three types of water one is fresh water second one is brackish water and third one is saline water or you can call it sea water or ocean water what is the meaning of fresh water fresh water means which does not have any kind of salinity salinity is measured in ppt salinity is measured in ppt sir what is ppt it is part per thousand like we have ppm part per million so salinity is measured into ppt part per thousand so if the water is having zero ppt of salinity or it can up to 0.5 0.5 means minimum salinity can be there otherwise salinity is absent so if the salinity is absent so water which has which does not have salinity is known as fresh water so water with the zero ppt of salinity is known as fresh water now what is brackish water brackish water means the water which has salinity of 0 more than 0 to 30 generally the range of brackish water salinity is 10 to 30 ppt this is generally it can be 8 ppt it can be 7 it can be 23 but yeah, generally it is 10 to 30 ppt and in case of saline water first was fresh water second was brackish water saline water has ppt more than 33 to 35 saline water has salinity of more than 33 to 35 ppt what is that this is saline water so if i divide the water based on the salinity so very less salinity means fresh water comparatively moderate salinity means brackish water and high salinity means it is yes of course marine water ocean water or call it sea water so now again on their staying habit on their breeding habit we used to classify the fishes into five parts there was a question which was asked in ibps af4 2020 examination from the catadromous fish 
सो सी देर आर फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ फिशेज वन इज एनाड्रोमस सेकेंड इज कैटाड्रोमस थर्ड इज एम्फीड्रोमस फोर्थ इज पोटेमोड्रोमस एंड द लास्ट वन इज ओशेनोड्रोमस As the name says, first one is anadromous. What is the meaning of anadromous? See, first of all, these all fishes are migratory fishes. Sir, what is the meaning of migratory? Yes, you knew it very well. Migratory means which used to move here and there. Like we people are doing. After twelfth, we move to agriculture college. Now after college, we move to agri coaching Chandigarh. And now this is the best place after agri coaching. You will move to the bank only. Yes, of course. Okay, perfect. So when we talk about these migratory fishes, so first we have anadromous. Anadromous is a migratory fish that used to live in salt water. So this fish, anadromous fish, will live in salt water. But for the breeding purpose, it will move to the fresh water. so fishes which used to stay in salt water and move to the fresh water for the cell, for the breeding purpose it is known as anadromous fish second one is catadromous what is the meaning of catadromous catadromous which which used to stay in the fresh water but for breeding purpose it used to move in salt water this is just opposite the at anadromous anadromous stays in salt water but breed in fresh water catadromous stays in fresh water but breed in salt water amphidromous is totally independent amphidromous that lives in both fresh water as well as salt water and independent of breeding for breeding purpose it can go in the salt water or it can go in the fresh water so amphidromous have the liberty to breed and stay in any kind of water and catadromous fish used to stay in the fresh water and breed in salt water anadromous fishes used to stay in salt water but breed in fresh water now the fourth one fourth one is potamodromous fisheries that move within the fresh water only yes this is migratory fish first of all it is staying here but for the breeding purpose it will migrate from one place to another place so this is migratory but it will move within fresh water only within fresh water only so this is potamodromous and the last one is oceanodromous which the name suggests itself oceanodromous so migratory fish that move within the ocean only an ocean has salt water so fish which used to move in the fresh water only uh, sorry not fresh water in the ocean water only it is known as yes oceanodromous clear about the five types everybody say yes or no yes absolutely right ha huh? okay so i uh, will repeat it again if the fish is staying in salt water breeding in fresh water it is anadromous if it is staying in the fresh water but breeding in salt water it is cat, uh, catadromous if it is independent on stay for staying as well as breeding it is amphidromous if it is migratory only in the fresh water it is potamodromous and if it is migratory but only in the ocean or saline water it is oceanodromous clear okay so this was the classification based on the migration as well as breeding now let's move to the next part next one is type of fishes so how many type of fishes we have yes we have marine fishes we have fresh water fishes or we have brackish water fishes or call it estuarine what is the meaning of this first one is marine fishery so again as the name suggests fishes which are which are uh, available or which are happening in the marine environment it is known as marine fishery so in case of marine fisheries we have two coast one is east coast and one is west coast i hope you guys know very well about the east and west coast because i'm delivering this video in english in the north india people used to listen hindi language only but if you are listening this video definitely you are from southern part of india and if you are in southern part so make sure try to check that you are near to the western ghat or near to the eastern ghat eastern ghat or western ghat or call them coast east coast or west coast now tell me which one is commercially important which one is commercially important is it west coast or is it east coast definitely it is west coast hai na okay so marine fishery means these deal with the fishing operation along the sea coast 
along the sea coast sea boundary within the sea area about 80% of india's marine fishes are supplied by the west coast and remaining 20% are supplied by the east coast so west coast is supplying 80% east is supplying only 20% that means more important is west coast now again try to calculate what are, what are the state which are under west coast and what are the state which are under east coast and again try to calculate or try to uh, know how many maritime state we have and how many maritime UTs we have in the next video or just write in the comment box how many maritime state we have and how many maritime UT we have now you will ask sir what is the meaning of maritime yes this is related to coastal area so if a state is having coastal area that is maritime state like rajasthan rajasthan does not have any kind of coastline but yeah gujarat have coastline so gujarat is maritime state and secondly rajasthan it's not a maritime state now my question to you is how many maritime state and ut we have in india write in the comment box and i will move to the second part which is fresh water fisheries fresh water is also known as inland fishery Sir, what is the meaning of inland? Nothing. It is very simple. It is inland. Oh, achha, I got it, sir. The resources of water which are present within the land is known as inland. Yes, you guys are absolutely right. You know? So, water resources which are found within the land. Like we have lakes, we have pond, we have canals. These all are the part of inland water resources. Ocean, ocean is not the part of inland because ocean is out of land, out of the uh, out of the boundary, not India's boundary, not geographical boundary, but out of solid boundary. So that cannot be called as inland. So freshwater or inland fisheries, they include fishes found in the river. It can be in irrigation canals. It can be reservoir. It can be lakes. It can be tank or pond. Do you know what is reservoir? Yes, of course. Hai na? You guys have watched a movie which is known as Pushpa. Hai na? So in Pushpa movie, they have, uh, sh uh, they have shown a video when that person was cutting the logs of the sandalwood trees. So they, you, when the police came and what they did, they thrown the all those logs of the wood in the water. So they have shown a dam in that video. Now, what is the meaning of dam? When we are, when we are trying to stop a water, when we are creating obstruction in the way of water, that is known as dam, and dam can be considered as a reservoir. So fishes found in the river irrigation canal, reservoirs, lakes, tanks, or ponds, they are known as inland fishes, or that can be known as fresh water fishes. Now, the last one is estuary. So before we move to the third part, estuary or brackish water fisheries, we need to know about the estuary. What are estuaries? See, estuaries, estuaries are the part of brackish water. And what is the meaning of estuary? When the water is getting mixed, when the sea water is getting mixed with the fresh water, our land area are having the water body which as fresh water but this fresh water is connected with the ocean and the ocean water is getting and is coming to the fresh water and when the ocean water and fresh water is getting mixed now that medium salinity water is known as brackish water so brackish water they operate in the estuaries where river water and sea water is getting mixed when we talk about the Ganga river Ganga river is getting starting from the Gangotri glacier and after Gangotri glacier it is moving to the various state from Uttar Pradesh to West Bengal so after West Bengal now it is getting mixed with the ocean water and that place is known as Bay of Bengal and when the Ganga river is getting mixed into the Bay of Bengal now that place will be known as Ashuri because at that place fresh water is getting mixed with the saline water and when the fresh water and saline water are getting mixed it is known as brackish water so brackish water has medium salinity so it can be delta channel it can be backwater it can be lagoons or it can be coastal lake i'm sure that you guys are knowing the meaning of these words if you are not clear just do one thing like if you don't know what is the meaning of lagoon so simply go to google write lagoon and do not study about the lagoon simply click on the images 
वंस यू विल सी टू और थ्री इमेजेस इट विल टेक नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी सेकेंड बट यू विल बी कंप्लीटली अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द लेगून राइट नाउ यू डोंट नीड टू स्टडी अबाउट द लेगून लेट सी दिस वीडियो ऑन द स्क्रीन यू कैन सी दिस इज द वॉटर बॉडी विच इज कनेक्टेड विद द सी एंड दीज वॉटर बॉडीज आर नोन एज लेगून्स I hope now we are clear about the lagoon. So there are three type of fishes: marine fisheries, freshwater fisheries, also known as inland fisheries, and estuarine, which is known as brackish water fishery. Now the second part of the fishery is capture fisheries as well as culture fisheries. Now what is the meaning of capture and culture fishery? When we talk about the capture and culture fishery, so capture means we are capturing the fishes. So we are going to the ocean and we are putting the net inside the ocean and directly we are extracting the fishes from the water. Now we are doing nothing. We are simply extracting the fishes from the water. This is known as capture fisheries. And when we are creating a pond, we are putting the water inside it. But now we are maintaining the quality of the water, maintain the quality of the soil. Now we are giving the seed of fishes. Means we are putting the fishes of fingerling side inside the pond. We are giving them the feed, and we are maintaining all those quality which are required for the fishes. Now I am rearing the fishes. Now these fishes are known as culture fishery. So culture means rearing of fishes. Capture means simply capturing from the water bodies. that can be ocean that can be river or that can be something else so capture fisheries means exploitation of aquatic organism without stocking the seed so we are not putting any kind of seed we are not putting any kind of fingerling directly we are extracting the fishes from the water this is carried out in the sea river reservoir etc so mainly you will see in sea and river in sea and river there are a lot of people who are involved who are involved in the capture fisheries like if i talk about the fishermen in india almost almost 16 million people are getting employment from the fisheries industry 16 millions means 1.6 crore so there are a lot of fishermen and there is one fisher women so fishermen used to go in the ocean and from ocean they are collecting the fishes now what is the fisheries or what type of fisheries it is this is capture fishery because simply they are capturing so capture fisher has two type one is marine capture and second one is inland capture when you are capturing from the ocean hai na when you are capturing the fishes from the ocean that is known as marine capture fishes and when we You, when you are trying to extract the fish from the river now this is known as inland capture sir why river are known as inland i recently told you this is inland so rivers are available within the land this is why it will be inland so capture can be inland or capture can be marine now the second one is culture it's not capture it is culture we are rearing the fish so culture fisheries is the cultivation of selected fishes in confined areas with utmost care a lot of care practices are given to the fisheries why to get the maximum yield because we want the highest productivity the seed is stored nursed and reared in the confined water then the crop is harvested so first of all we are putting the fingerling size of fishes inside the pond and after that we are rearing them into the water and after almost one year the fishes are getting extracted or fish are get fishes are getting harvested that is known as culture fishery perfect now we are about the capture as well as culture fishery so we'll move to the next part we'll be talking about or we'll be discussing about the types of culture fisheries because we are culturing the fishes but fishes can be cultured in the so in the so many different different water bodies like have you talked or have you seen or have you studied about the fisheries along with the paddy field yes sir i have studied about that yes hai na so one we are rearing the fishes in the paddy field second we can rear the fishes in the pond third we can rear in the riverine river in sir yes river we can rear the fishes in the river even we can rear the fishes in the ocean now we'll say no sir it's not possible you cannot rear the fishes in the ocean yes you can extract you can capture the fishes from the ocean no 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 we can rear yes of course by using this method which is known as cage culture na if you are not aware about this simply go to the google or wait for my next class i'll be telling you what is the meaning of cage culture so we are putting the cage in the ocean and rearing the fish so even in the ocean we have culture fisheries so talk about the type of culture fisheries basically there are four types of culture fisheries 
वन इज फ्रेश वॉटर फिशरीज सेकेंड इज ब्रैकेज वॉटर थर्ड इज केज एक्वाकल्चर एंड फोर्थ इज ऑर्नामेंटल so let's say if you have a pond in your backyard in your home or in your in your field so if you have a pond which is having fresh water which is having water which has zero ppt in salinity so that type of fisheries when you are rearing the fishes in this water when you are rearing it will be known as culture fisheries and you are rearing in the water which has zero ppt of salinity now this type of culture fisheries will be considered as <coughs> fresh water fisheries second one is brackish water when you are rearing the fishes in 10 to 30 ppt of salinity normally in brackish water people in india are rearing shrimp do you know what is shrimp of course yes hai na so shrimp cultivation is getting done in the brackish water so if it is medium salinity water that is known as brackish water and in brackish water if fishes are there and we are rearing them it is culture and which part of culture it is brackish water third one is cage aquaculture so i said what we are doing even we are rearing the fishes in the ocean so let let me show you in a video first of all just listen to this what is the meaning of cage aquaculture we are putting the cage in the ocean just see this video hai na so here you can see we have we have added the cage in the ocean where water is moving freely but fishes are getting reared inside the cage so this is the part of culture fisheries which can be done in the ocean or which can be done in the river or it can be done in any kind of reservoir this will be known as cage aquaculture and is the part of culture fisheries and next one is ornamental fisheries what is the meaning of ornamental fisheries so talking about the ornamental fisheries ornamental fisheries means like uh, i hope you have seen the aquarium in the various offices or it can be in the house also so in the aquarium there are so many beautiful fishes so those fishes are getting reared not for the meat purpose it's for the ornamental purpose but we are rearing the fishes if we are rearing it's the part of culture but if it is for the beautification so that will be known as ornamental fishes now you are clear about the four part fresh water brackish water cage aquaculture or ornamental fisheries if you have any kind of doubt just write in the comment section and definitely i'll be explaining in the next video or i'll try to write the answer of your doubt in the comment section only so we discuss about the type of culture fisheries now next one is inland fisheries in inland we will discuss about the types of inland fisheries because within the within the land it can be in the river it can be in the reservoir it can be in the estuary or it can be in the wetland what is wetland let me explain first of all riverine riverine means the river system of india so all the rivers whatever the rivers are available in the india it can be perennial rivers it can be seasonal rivers perennial rivers means which has water throughout the year and seasonal river means water is available in those rivers in monsoon season only so seasonal river means water is available for a limited time and perennial rivers means throughout the year like ganga river and in ganga you can see water throughout the year so that is perennial river so all the river system is known as riverine and riverine is the part of our inland system because rivers are available within the land second one is reservoir reservoir means when we are trying to store or when we are trying to create a obstruction in the way of the water that is known as reservoir like dam so in the dam if you are rearing the fishes it is a part of inland next one is estuarine we have recently studied about the estuarine so where lagoon can be there or where uh, river water is getting mixed with the sea water so when the river water is getting mixed with the sea water that is not the part of inland because now we are talking about the ocean sea water it's not inland but when you are talking about the lagoons do you remember about lagoons yes and a water body which is connected with the sea water so lagoons are available within the land so it's a part of inland in inland it has brackish water it is known as estuaries and last one is wetland there can be two type of wetland one is open wetland and one is closed wetland in close wetland i can talk about the paddy field also sir why paddy field because in paddy field it is almost almost 5 to 6 me 6 months when the water is in the stagnant condition in the paddy field so in that close wetland we can rear the fishes it will be the part of inland fisheries and second is open wetland sir what is open wetland 
डू यू नो अबाउट सेकेंड फेब ये सेकेंड फेब इज वर्ल्ड वेटलैंड डे सो वेटलैंड आर द एरिया विच आर कैप्ट रिजर्व फॉर द वॉटर यू विल सी ऑल द टाइम वॉटर इज देयर वॉटर इज इन द स्टेगनेट कंडीशन एंड वॉटर इज गेटिंग परकोलेटेड इट इज गेटिंग फिल्ट्रेटेड बाय द सोयल एंड आफ्टर गेटिंग परकोलेटेड इट इज गोइंग डाउन एंड इट इज रिचार्जिंग आर ग्राउंड वॉटर लाइक वेन वी आर डिगिंग द ट्यूबवेल वेन वी आर एडिंग द ट्यूबवेल इन द सरफेस वॉटर सो वी आर एक्सट्रेक्टिंग द वॉटर वी आर जस्ट डिस्चार्जिंग द ग्राउंड लेवल एंड बाई परकोलेशन बाय द वेटलैंड it is recharging the water level so wetland means it can be open wetland where water is in the stagnant condition in the open area or it can be closed wetland but maybe it is open or maybe it is closed but in both cases the part of inland fisheries so now in inland we have four types riverine reservoir estuary as well as wetland i hope you guys are clear about the inland fisheries now in the last we will talk about the marine fisheries and then we'll be discussing the remaining concept in the next class in the next class we will be discussing about the ras recirculating aquaculture system and secondly we will discuss about the bft which is known as new blue revolution i would like to ask you about the full form of bft i said bft is known as the new blue revolution not just blue revolution it is new blue revolution so can you tell me what is a full form of bft okay so we'll talk about the ras system and bft in the next video right now we'll just like cover the lecture we'll just wind up the lecture with the marine fisheries what is the meaning of marine fisheries in case of marine fisheries now marine fisheries is divided into the three parts one is pelagic fisheries second is dorsal fisheries and third one is deep sea fishery so what is pelagic fisheries pelagic fisheries means fishes which are neither close to the bottom and nor close to the shore so it is found just below the surface area not on the bottom hai na it's not close to the bottom it's not close to the shore so just below the surface water so the fishes which are found in the marine water just below the surface it is known as pelagic and fishes which are found in the ground water or in the ground or in the bottom it is known as dorsal or ground fish which used to stay at the ground only near to the ground only have you ever went to the ocean of course yes you have seen so many beaches so in beaches when we are just entering into the ocean so you realize yes there is surface but the surface can be 10 meter 100 meter or maybe it can be 1000 meter of depth but these fishes used to stay near the ground these fishes not close to the ground and not close to the shore and the last one is deep sea fishes in case of deep sea fishes as the name suggests deep sea so it used to stay away from the photic zone of the ocean what is the meaning of photic zone photic zone means where sunlight where light is available in the water so they don't like to stay in the light you know so they will be staying in the dark area this is why it is known as deep sea fishes so the depth of deep sea fishes can be more than 1000 meter so if the fishes are staying in the marine environment leaving the photic zone and living on the bottom where the depth is more it is more than 1000 meter it is deep sea fishes if it is near to the ground it is dorsal or ground fish and if it is not near to the ground or not near to the shore it is known as pelagic fish so in this we have discussed about the distribution of the fishes about the various type of fishes if you are having any kind of doubt please feel free to write in the comment section and in case if you don't like this video please please give me your suggestion because seriously i want to work for the english medium student and uh, it's very difficult to start a batch for the english medium do you know why because very few people are there in the english medium in case of agriculture but i'll be doing this for this year but i can do if i'll be getting your support so if you don't like this if you like this video you have the like button if you don't like this video please tell me your feedback and definitely i will work on your feedback and i will be improving myself in the next video and if you like the video if you are able to understand my language do click on the right button and write your feedback in the comment section now i'll see you in the next video till then take care bye bye have a great time jai hind jai bharat